There are the times for the funny cold opens on my videos, and then there are times like these, where I'm left to ponder the questions, would these guys be as famous as they are today if that night had never happened? Hi, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. This is going to be a bit of a different video today. I actually didn't realize I was going to do this video until about 24 hours ago. Yes, the anniversary almost slipped by me. This, and this is one of those times when part of me questions how much of a true music fan I am when I let these occasions almost slip by me. But anyway, yes, it was exactly 60 years ago today, in the early morning hours of February 3rd, 1959, that a plane crash outside of Clear Lake, Iowa, claimed the lives of rock and roll pioneers Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and J.P. Richardson, popularly known as the Big Bopper. They had been taking part in a Midwest concert tour known as the Winter Dance Party, along with fellow act Dion and the Belmonts. Now, the tour was particularly grueling, with transportation limited to buses, with no heating systems. <laughs> yeah, in the upper Midwest in February. Good planning. And these buses had a tendency to break down. Uh, the first bus was reportedly replaced four times in the first 11 days of the tour, as well as a ridiculous itinerary with their route randomly zigzagging across the region instead of following any sort of a sensible path. Uh, so a frustrated Buddy Holly eventually chartered a four-seat plane to transport himself and his band from Clear Lake to their next tour stop in Moorhead, Minnesota. Now, despite the bad weather that night, and the pilot not having the experience necessary for primarily instrument-guided flying in bad weather, the flight took off as scheduled, just before 1 a.m., and it crashed a few minutes later with no survivors. Richardson was 28 years old, Holly was only 22, and Valens was just 17. Now, 12 years later, of course, with singer-songwriter Don McLean's hit song, American Pie, this tragedy would henceforth be known as The Day the Music Died. One of the good things that came out of it, though, was that uh, this crash played a huge part in convincing authorities to adopt the policy which is still in place today of not releasing the names of the deceased to the media until after the victim's families had been notified. Now, what if scenarios tend to fascinate me? For instance, Buddy Holly's bandmates at the time were future outlaw country star Waylon Jennings and guitarist Tommy Alsop. Uh, and they were originally scheduled to fly with Holly, but Jennings offered his seat to Richardson, who was suffering from the flu, and Alsop lost his seat to Valens when they flipped a coin for it. And also, uh, for the next performance after the crash, a young singer named Bobby V filled in for the fallen musicians. So obviously, I wonder not only what amazing songs we might have gotten from Buddy Holly and Richie Valens and the Big Bobber had they lived, but also, would Waylon Jennings and Tommy Alsop have been remembered today if their lives had been cut short? And also, would Bobby V still be a popular singer if those tragic circumstances hadn't given him his big break? Now, Buddy Holly was actually a more revolutionary musician than probably a lot of people, especially the younger fans, realize today. Uh, for instance, he was one of the first white artists to employ the strong drum beat and bass rhythm that before then was confined to the rhythm and blues or so-called Negro music. And he cre actually created quite a little dust-up uh, with that, about the same time as Elvis Presley did. And also, he was largely responsible for uh, popularizing that small band format, you know, just guitar, bass, and drums, uh, that countless bands after that would adopt, everybody from the Beatles to Weezer. And even when it comes down to uh, the visual stylings, his trademark thick rim glasses uh, would inform Roy Orbison's visual style after that. And even Richie Valens probably played more of an influence in music history than a lot of people give him credit for. I mean, he helped bring Latino culture into mainstream popular music. He was really the first Mexican-American rock star. Uh, La Bamba, for instance, was a little-known traditional Mexican folk song before he got his hands on it and made it a smash hit on the radio. So, uh, yeah, both his career and Holly's were surprisingly short, considering that their legacy has just con continued on for decades. I actually found out about this anniversary early enough last night that I was able to sit down and watch both of these movies, uh, The Buddy Holly Story and La Bamba, which, as you can see, are actually both available in a twin pack if uh, you go online looking for it. Yeah, The Buddy Holly Story starred uh, Gary Busey as Buddy Holly, and it was made in 1978, and La Bamba, which is probably the more popular of the two films, uh, starred Lou Diamond Phillips as Richie Valens, and it was made in 1987. And they were both just fantastic, outstanding movies. 
in my opinion, they're must-see for anybody who's a music fan, and particularly anybody who's uh, got an interest in the early history of rock and roll music. So, yeah, I can't say enough good things about these movies. They, they, they still hold up, really. Yeah, I mentioned a few minutes ago how uh, Buddy Holly basically revolutionized white music by bringing uh, R&B, the black R&B elements into it, you know, the, the rhythm and stuff like that. Well, there's a hilarious scene in the Buddy Holly story where the Apollo Theater in Harlem had booked Buddy Holly and his band before realizing that they were a white band. Didn't even know that they were a white band until they showed up for their performance that night. So it created a hilariously awkward, uh, racially overtoned scene. Not offensive at all. It's hilarious the way that they did it. But uh, yeah, I highly recommend both of these movies, as I said. Uh, Must-see viewing, in my opinion. So uh, yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it or were enlightened by it. Uh, comments, suggestions, requests, constructive criticisms, any or all of the above, whether about this video or anything on my channel or about music in general, tell me all about it in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. Also, please be sure to subscribe as well. Uh, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. And uh, be sure and check out all my past videos to see what you might have missed. Also, I invite you to check out my friends and fellow YouTubers links, which are all down in my description below. All those channels are very much worth watching. Uh, they wouldn't be in that list if they weren't. So, otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.